Why do people move to Portland? Well, it's for this, the great outdoors. And in this episode, we're gonna show you what it's truly like to live in Portland, Oregon, if you take advantage of all that it has to offer. And when I'm talking about that, the main thing I'm talking about is the great outdoors. We're on the river right now today on the Willamette, doing a little stand-up paddle boarding. And guys, let me tell you what, it's beautiful out here today. It's late summer. There is nowhere better than the Pacific Northwest in August, September. The sky is so blue. The sun is always shining, but you still have greenery and flowers and nature and birds. And it's just really, there's nowhere better to be. Let's go check out the river and talk about living in Portland, Oregon. If you're watching this video, you're interested in moving to Portland, Oregon and finding something out about it. Well, this video, we're gonna explore why people move to Portland, Oregon, and guess what? It's the great outdoors and the laid back lifestyle that all of that brings to it. We're right here on the Willamette doing some stand up paddle boarding today, and we're gonna take you with us. Let's go. I'm Aaron Cullen, I'm a local real estate agent. If you have any questions, my information's right down in our description area. If you're moving here to Portland, Give me a call, reach out, be happy to answer any questions you might have. Oh yeah, this is my wife. She's a big part of the videos. Can't forget out to introduce her. And she's also a real estate investor with a wealth of knowledge, all that has to do with living in Portland and real estate. So with that, let's get into it and let's start exploring the Willamette River and talking about all the fun things you can do in Portland. Why are people moving here? I post all the time just our life in Portland on Instagram and I you know, have friends from all over and people that I don't necessarily know and they're always like, where do you live? It is gorgeous there. And this is why. Yeah, this so is it. Right now we are cruising down the Willamette in Lake Oswego where we live, but the Willamette goes all through Portland and down into West Lynn covers through a lot of parts of the city and that's one of the amazing things about Portland is there's a lot of cities that have some access to nature depending on where you live in the city but the thing about Portland is that no matter what neighborhood what quadrant you're in there is some kind of nature or water really accessible to you so most people have a hiking trail uh, a walking trail a stretch along the river that's you know pretty close, five, 10 minutes away yeah, from where they close, are. Very close, very close. The Willamette River that we're on right now cuts right through north and south through the city of Portland. So downtown's just on the west side of it. I'll throw up a map so you can check it out. And then the Columbia goes pretty much west to east along the north part of the river and separates Washington and Oregon, just right above uh, Portland. So Vancouver, the city, a lot of people live there and will commute into Portland. So that's another option as well. If you have any questions or information about Vancouver, reach out, give me a call. Yeah, and so because the rivers run through the city, you can easily access water from anywhere in the city. And then it's not just the rivers, there's also a lot of forested trails all through Portland. Um, there are mountains, there's, you know, skiing an hour away, the oceans, an hour, the oceans, multiple oceans, <laughs> the beaches. That, that Pacific Ocean with the beaches. <laughs> that one ocean called the Pacific. Uh, which, which is amazing. We're going there in a few weeks. In a few weeks. The Oregon coast is about 90 minutes west of Portland. And so just access to all the different types of nature is really close by. We have been walking down the street from our house this week, picking blackberries. It's berry season here in the Northwest. And so you'll find wild berries all along trails and roads. I sent our nanny and our son down to the park this morning to pick some blackberries. Our kids just absolutely love that experience in the summertime. Yeah, our daughter, Juliet, absolutely loves going to pick berries it's you know you turn a, a walk that sometimes kids don't really want to do oh my legs are tired when you've only like started down the driveway but as soon as you mention hey well we're gonna go pick some blackberries then she perks up she's excited she wants to get over to the trail 
where she can have some of those delicious blackberries. Yeah. So nature is accessible all around. And then let's talk about the different types of outdoor activities people enjoy here, honey. So, By the way, this river is like really warm. It's, it's a warm day in August. It's, the sun is pretty intense and the river feels so good. Yeah. Yeah, it's only 73 degrees right now. It's like a little after, it's like 1130. Yeah, today is just gonna be a beautiful, beautiful day. You know, one of the things about the weather here in the summertime, it definitely stays a little cooler, you know, in the morning, so like the first half of the day even, and the highest temperatures really doesn't get until, you know, like three o'clock is when it really starts to heat up. So I don't consider myself the world's most outdoorsy person. I'm like no. a mid outdoorsy yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. and, definitely not. But, I, it has added so much to like my daily quality of life. I think a sense of calm and just that way to decompress and rejuvenate getting outside almost every day, every season here. And then some days obviously are more special than others being out here for a midweek paddle board with my husband. I think living here, it would be hard to go back to somewhere where we don't have this access to nature. Yeah. And you know, I've lived in LA where I could walk to Runyon Canyon. That's a whole different kind of hiking experience mm -hmm. where there are thousands of other people hiking at the same time. Yeah. And living in LA where you have access to the beach, but it's a hectic traffic filled car ride to get there, um, full of parking issues <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah. So I think just in terms of the ease of daily life here in nature, it really can't be beat. Look how cool, that's like a private beach. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. That's that little easement that we walked past. Yeah, so here's a private beach right here, which is would be an easement to some of the houses that live right back there. And they have little boot, they have little moorings right here for to anchor for their boats and a private beach. They got their stand-up paddle boards there, a little fisher's boat. I mean, how cool is that? That's one of the cool things about here is there are all these unique little spots that you can have access to depending on where you live and what you want. So I think nature and the outdoors here is also just such a welcoming way to introduce kids to a love of being outside. We have friends all the time that are taking their kids camping over at Mount Hood or at the beach. I'm not quite that adventurous. <laughs> a day trip is good for me right now with the age our kids are, but our kids do thrive out there at the pumpkin patches, mm -hmm. picking berries, going hiking, swimming. I think so many families enjoy the outdoors here with their kids. No, that's so true. And our kids just love being outside. You know, and all kids, young kids, right, probably pretty much love being outside, outdoors, running around. They say kids really need to spend three to four hours a day just being outside. What was it, four to five? Four to five. Yeah, four to five really hard to do today. But you know what? Living here in Portland makes that a lot easier to do. Because one, you don't have all the traffic that makes it really hard to get to places. You know, depending on where you live in Portland, you know, there's a river or there's hiking trails, you know, within five to 10 minutes, most likely of anywhere that you live in Portland, which is It was amazing. like 15 minutes from our door to the put-in with these paddle boards this morning. Yeah, exactly, 15 minutes. And we can just go do it for an hour and then go be back at the office. What's it like to live on the water? And what kind of access is there in Portland to being able yeah. to live on the water? Oh man, don't get me started on living on the water. That's one of my dreams, living on the water. Growing up, we used to have a beach house in Lake Travis in Austin, Texas. And it was amazing, just doing fishing by the dock, water skiing on our boat. It was a lot, a lot of fun. Hit on the different areas in Portland where the, it is possible to live on the water. Yeah, so depending on your price point, you can definitely live on the water. Really, almost any price point, it just depends on what kind of housing you want, right? So even starting at like $300,000, one of the ways you can do it is having a houseboat. Like they have these floating houseboats, which are very popular on the Columbia and on the Willamette. And the price range starts at about 300,000 and it goes up from there. The average is probably around about five to 600,000 for a really nice three bed, two bath one that's had some updating done to it. But the two tricky things about it is one, financing is a little trickier about it, but you can get financing. It's a little bit, it's gonna be a higher interest rate. And number two, 
you also pay a very high HOA fee, which is kind of like for the put in, like the space on the river. So those kind of average around $1,500 a month just for that kind of rental for the space, but you actually buy the houseboat. Another way are condos. Even the Pearl District was one of the most popular areas to live. Very urban, downtown, you're in the city. Super walkable. There's a bunch of condo options that are right on the Willamette that you can have access to. And even an old town as well, which borders just south of there, you're also gonna have a bunch of condo options. I had three listings that were all right there waterfront a few months ago, and all of those went fairly quickly, but those price points for one bed, one bath were about 300,000. With a view of the river. A like view of the river just right there at your footsteps. And, and it even has a boat dock, you put in your paddle board, your kayak, all right there, which if you're single, I think is amazing. And they even have two bedrooms there. So if you're not single, if you have a kid or whatever, that is also an option as well. And then as you come south through Portland, there are parts of John's Landing or South Portland that are condos along the river there, yep. right? And then you come down into the Dunthorpe area of Portland into Lake Oswego, yep. where we are on the east side of the Willamette here is Milwaukee. It is right across on the east side of this river. And you can get waterfront property there between one and two million. And on the Lake Oswego side, and it's gonna go a lot higher up from there because you're in the school district that's very sought after in Lake Oswego and more of that exclusive community. And then you can also be on the lake and there's a couple of lake houses for sale right now for two million that are on like these little fingers on these canals that they call it. Uh, but then if you're gonna be on the main lake, I think the cheapest one right now actually just went under $3 million. So it's like 2.9 million. You could be right on Lake Oswego with a boat right there. So one of the other options in Lake Oswego is you could have a lake easement. Now there's about 3,000 homes in Lake Oswego with easements. So you don't have to live on the lake to have access to the lake. Now, if that's something interesting to you, go ahead and give me a call. My information's right down there in the description area. Actually just closed a couple days ago for a client that's moving from out of state from California. And at that price point was $900,000 and it had three lake easements to choose from and the house was fully renovated. So there are properties under a million dollars in Lake Oswego with lake easements, if that's something you're interested in. And then the river goes down through West Lynn, another really great community and school district, and there are riverfront homes down in West Lynn. And there are also really cool pockets along the river where there's kind of like a, a small community put in, boat put in, or little tiny beach. There's like this little tiny beach right here that yep, I think right here um, belongs to a handful of houses on the river right here. And so you can get access without necessarily living on the river, but there are just these little tiny communities that have uh, yeah. a little easement along the river. Yeah. Yeah, and so you really have to be very targeted for your search if you want to be on the river or the lake or have access to one of the, one of them. So reach out, give me a call. Information is right down in the description area. I'd be happy to run through you some of those options. You just got to be a little more patient, a little bit more targeted with exactly what you want. So when it pops up, you're ready to take action. Okay, so we talked about how nature is really all around you in Portland, but what kinds of activities do people really enjoy here? So let me just start off with what we're doing right now. Stand up paddle boarding, although we are sitting right now, <laughs> but here's some people in front of us that just passed us. You know, one of them standing, one of them sitting. It's just gorgeous out here. I mean, this is one of the very popular things for people to do. Stand up paddle boarding. You can also go kayaking. You can also go fishing. There's a guy that just passed us doing a little fishing right off his kayak. And then it can just be, you know, cruising with families. A lot of people do um, blow up kayaks or blow up paddle boards where they can just deflate them, reinflate them when they get here to the, to the river. Uh, and that way you don't have to have like a roof rack or anything special. So a lot of people use those here, which are very popular. You know, you just have a little inflating device and boom, there you go. You're ready to go anywhere on the river, very portable with a car. And you can see just like how peaceful this river is too. There yeah. are parts of it that are a lot busier, wider, but this particular stretch is just super calm. It feels a little yeah. more like a lake, honestly, right here. 
Absolutely, and that's one of the things that people use the rivers here like lakes. And so you just gotta think about it a little bit differently depending on where you live. Um, if it, there's more lake life type activities, you're gonna do all of those on the rivers here, you know, if you live in and around Portland. So the rivers here really are treated like lakes. So you can do boating, you can do skiing, you can do wakeboarding, you can do fishing, you can do stand up powder boarding, you can do kayaking. All of that is right here. Or you can just do plain old swimming. Portland has a ton of beaches. Uh, they've done this, there was an organization over the last 10 to 12 years that revitalized beaches along the Willamette here and the Columbia in Portland to really try to make the city embrace the, the river beaches. And they've really done an amazing job with that. So right down there in the description area, I'll put a link there. There's also uh, like, you know, crew, legit rowing crew. crew. Yeah. You had your first lesson this week. I did. So the city of Lake Oswego offers adult rowing, crewing, however you want to say it. They call it rowing. So they have a they have a boat house, a row house, right down there on the Willamette, and it's awesome. Um, you know, and if, if you're even if you're a non-resident, you can still do it. It's a little bit increased price, but if you're a resident, you get a discount, and it's you know it's for adults. So there's a whole gamut of age ranges, and they it's for beginners. The one that I'm in, I've never rowed before. It just seemed like a lot of fun. So you do a whole rowing session for like one month, two days a week, and they train you up uh, out of the water and then you get in the water and then after that you're kind of certified to do crewing to do rowing and then you can go advance on to the next level which I just think is really cool and then you can sign up to get on you know where you're rowing you know like every day uh, with a bunch of people and it just sounds awesome to have a little bit of that organizational get some of the exercise get forced out on the on the river I'm doing a class that's 5 a.m. to, no, 5.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. I have to get up at 5 a.m. He is not a 5 a.m. person, so no. that's how enticing being out on the water yeah. in these summer months is. But let me tell you, I, like I was telling you, it was, it was beautiful, especially this time of year, because I'm there for sunrise, and the sun's already starting to come up, so it's light out, even at 5.30, and then boom, sunrise right before 6 a.m. I mean, it's just magical. It's glass on the river. You know, it's really quiet now, but you're getting some boats. So, you know, you just have those kinds of experiences. Another thing people have access to are the lakes. Now, the city of Portland only has one lake, which in the greater city of Portland, which is Oswego Lake and Lake Oswego, where we live. But a short ride anywhere from 35, 40 minutes to, you know, a couple hours away, there's about 19 other lakes that are accessible. Uh, uh, Portland Monthly just put out an article that highlights all the different beaches that you can access within a couple hours of Portland. So we're gonna go check out one next weekend. Yeah, and so that's just the water. Another hugely popular activity in Portland is hiking. So Forest yes. Park is a giant natural forest that goes through the city. There's a lot of hiking in Forest Park. I'm actually meeting a coaching client there in a couple weeks to go for a coaching oh. hike. That's the kind of thing that oh, you do awesome. in Portland. That's really cool. And Forest Park is just one park. So there are a lot, there's Tryon Creek Park here in Lake Oswego, Cook's Butte, so many trails easily accessible from wherever you are. So instead of going for a walk, you can literally go for a trail hike, trail run, mountain biking mm -hmm. along those trails. We went on a walk yesterday from our house that was really more of a mountain biking trail. Yeah. And then also cycling in the city. So Portland is a huge commuter cycling mecca. If you are someone who likes to ride your bike to work, Portland has like a huge number of commuter cyclists. Aaron's getting a little turned around by the, got, the wake. The wake, the wake just got me all wet, We're which is okay. On the, I just got a bunch of water in my lap. So we've covered water, hiking, cycling, skiing. Mount Hood is just, you know, an easy day trip of skiing. Yep. What, 40 miles, 50 miles mm -hmm. east of Portland. 
Hood River, a little town at the base of the mountain. Super cute town that's both along the Columbia and Mount Hood. And so you really get the best of both worlds. Along the Columbia in that stretch east of Portland, people do windsurfing and mm -hmm. the Columbia is yep. a, a wider- One of the dads intense. in my dad, local dad's group here in Lake Oswego. I have a local Facebook group here in Lake Oswego, a dad's group. And one of the new members, he was just telling me that he is into windsurfing and he's done it in the Columbia. He was doing it in California where they just moved from. I thought that was pretty impressive. It's one of those things that I think would be really fun to do, but I think I'm a little too old to get into that. Uh, seems a little scary to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because you are a sailor. You know how to surf. Yes. You have all the skills. Yep. But you're... I love sailing, but I don't know. It kind of falls right in there with like, uh, what is that, hang gliding? You know, I think I'm a little old now for hang gliding. I don't love heights. So, you know, keep me on the water and I'm good. Okay, cycling, hiking, water sports, skiing, surfing at the coast. Yes. So a lot of people do go to Manzanita and other beaches on the coast for surfing. Our next door neighbors have a couple of teenagers and they go to the beach to go surfing all the time. Your neighbors just got a beach house in Manzanita last summer and we always used to get invited to their barbecues during the summertime. Guess what? They get a beach house, no more invites because they're not even here anymore. So that's been a little bit of a bummer, but <laughs> we hey. have stayed at the beach house. So it's that's there, true. It's, one thing about nature and the great outdoors here in Portland is that I think it's a really welcoming place for kids to get that nature experience. There are a number of outdoor schools here. There's that experience of berry picking, going, is that a bald eagle? Oh yeah, there's a bald eagle there right behind us. Is that actually, or no. No, that's a hawk. We just heard there's a bald us. eagle nest on this island up here. That. Probably can't see it up in the blue there. But yeah, there's a bald eagle's nest right around the corner from us, but that is a hawk. I forget the name of that one, but it's very large. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been wondering why people move to Portland, Oregon? Well, hopefully we've clued you into a little bit of one of the reasons why they might move out here, and that's for the great outdoors. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you have any questions about moving here, go ahead and reach out to me. My information's right down there in the description area. This has been a lot of fun, but now we got to paddle back to the shore. <laughs> Splash each other a little too. bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>